Okay. Well, good morning, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome everyone to part two of the Dubai Advantage webinar series. Uh, after a very successful webinar last week on Dubai's thriving healthcare sector, today's session will cover Dubai's logistics sector and the opportunities it offers to U.S. businesses. I'm honored to participate today with co-host Safar Shah, a global leading law firm uh, and with uh, key offices in Houston, Texas, which is why we are, uh, this, this focus is, is coming as we're on, on uh, Texas. Also very, very pleased to have on the, uh, on the presentation this morning and on the webinar, His Excellency Saeed Almeri, the UAE Consul General in Houston, and Fahad al Gergawi and Saeed Alawadi, uh, CEO of Dubai FDI and CEO of Dubai Exports, both their excellencies, and other uh, guests that we will introduce uh, momentarily. Let me just say that uh, since the UAE's formation in 1971, the country's leadership has made significant investments in the construction of world-class ports, airports, roads, logistics facilities, and other infrastructure. These far-sighted investments have reaped enormous dividends, transforming the UAE into the business, trade, travel, tourism, and transshipment hub for the greater Middle East, North Africa region. As someone who cares deeply about the U.S.-UAE relationship, I'm proud of the role that leading U.S. companies have played in building much of the infrastructure that has made the UAE what it is today. Moreover, I'm also very proud to see many U.S. companies attracted by this infrastructure and these opportunities to establish opportunities in the UAE, to, excuse me, to establish operations in the UAE. For instance, companies like FedEx use Dubai as a regional hub as it offers access to the Middle East, the Indian subcontinent, Africa, and the Asia Pacific region. I should note FedEx's 1,200 plus team of members in Dubai have played a critical role in the global response to the current public health crisis, helping deliver necessary medical supplies and PPE around the world to, to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Our very close friend and colleague from Dubai South, uh, Mohsen Anad, we will be on the, uh, on the discussion later, and he will talk about some of these logistics efforts. Etihad and Emirates Airline, Emirates Airline from Dubai is on uh, the webinar today as well, and we'll discuss some of the cargo uh, aspects of what happened during COVID-19 and what's coming next as a result. Today, I hope to see many more U.S. companies inspired to make the decision to establish operations in Dubai. In addition to an impressive, impressive assortment of companies, we are pleased to have representatives from a number of other states in the United States beyond Texas. We have Alabama, Florida, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, and Utah represented on the call today, along with the great state of Texas playing host. Thank you all for taking the time to join us this morning. Moreover, we are pleased to have a very impressive slate of speakers, which I've uh, highlighted, to talk about Dubai as the logistics powerhouse that it is today. Before introducing the speakers specifically for each one of their uh, sets of discussion, let me draw your attention to the Q&A feature within the WebEx platform. It's at the bottom of your screen, and we encourage you to pose and post your questions for the various speakers as we go through the webinar, and we have saved some time at the end to then answer and discuss uh, your questions. Over the course, if I could go to slide two, please. Over the course of the, this session, in addition to hearing from our partners at Safar Shah, we are pleased to have three prominent UAE free zones, trade zones presenting to today, Dubai South, Jebel Ali Free Zone, and Dubai Airport Free Zone. They will be joined by two important Dubai government institutions, Dubai Exports and Dubai FDI. And last but not least, as I said, we will hear from the Emirates Sky Cargo Group, the cargo wing of the leading UAE uh, airline, Emirates Airline. If we could go to slide three, this will show you the, our, our officials and our speakers today on the agenda uh, and our agenda for the day. And then if we could, please, we're going to have quickly uh, an opening video 
before I turn it over to our first speaker. Please, if we could play the video. They say a picture paints a thousand words. Uh, a video like that obviously paints uh, many, many more and gives you a very uh, in, in important impression of what's happening in Dubai today with regard to logistics and transportation. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the, the true organizer of this event uh, and the lead, the lead co-host, if you will, Sai Padalala, the senior counsel at Seyfarth Shah. Uh, Sai is an international corporate and commercial lawyer with significant cross-border and technology transactional experience across many industries and sectors. Sai and uh, Saifa Shah are partners to Dubai SDI in their roadshow efforts in the United States, and we are pleased once again from the Business Council's perspective to partner with Sai and such a reputable firm to co-host uh, this webinar. Sai, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Danny, for your gracious introduction. I appreciate it as always. Uh, just to reiterate very quickly, my name is Sai Tiratala. I'm senior counsel at Saifart Shaw. It's an AMLA 100 ranked international law firm. We have about 1,000 attorneys and over 17 offices spread across the world. I spearhead the Middle East practice in conjunction with my colleagues across the world. It's a multidisciplinary practice. We also have a robust uh, transportation and logistics practice that includes uh, many uh, high-profile prominent individuals who've served in various presidential administrations at the, at the top of the U.S. Department of Transportation and the like. <clears throat> Historically, Dubai has long served as a critical crossway for international trade. It's no secret that its relevance continues today with respect to international trade channels, given its strategic and central location. But above and beyond that, Dubai has been incredibly successful in building an impressive logistics infrastructure in what used to be an expansive patch of desert. This infrastructure includes one of the world's busiest ports in Jebeleli and the array of assets owned and operated by DP World, for example. These ports enjoy a worldwide reach that is a foundation and impetus to international exports and imports. There are also numerous dry ports and ground logistics pathways that interconnect the GCC and parts of South Asia. As we march forward to emerging out of a COVID world, it's important that traders, merchants, and shippers worldwide know of and understand the Dubai advantage and how to tap into it, not just for Dubai's benefit, but also to give themselves a competitive advantage in today's dynamic marketplace as an attorney, as a businessman, and just as a, an observer of, of market trends. Um, my, I and Saifar Shah are obviously here to help uh, our clients, contacts, people who are curious to do business in Dubai, and people who just uh, you know, have questions about how they can enter the market. So we remain here at your disposal. And uh, last but not least, we are certainly glad to partner with the U.S. UAE Business Council and with the Dubai FDI and with the other organizations presenting today. So thank you very much. I thank you very much for those uh, great words about Dubai as a logistics hub in the region and the world. Uh, very, very critical, very, very important. Um, it's my great honor to next in, uh, introduce Consul General uh, Saeed Almeri. His Excellency Saeed Almeri uh, was appointed as the Consul General in Houston from the United Arab Emirates in November of 2016. He hit the ground running. Uh, I think we've partnered with him with a few events in Houston already, most recently last fall. 
Uh, prior to his assignment in Houston, he headed the consular section at the UAE Embassy in Washington, D.C., where we also had the great pleasure of working with him while, uh, during his time there. Uh, his Excellency is an amazing resource for Texas companies uh, interested in, in expanding, growing, or opening uh, for the first time business in the UAE. Uh, your Excellency, thank you so much for joining us today. Over to you for your, for your thoughts and comments. Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. Good morning, everyone here in Houston, in the USA, and good evening to everyone in the back home in UAE and Dubai. Uh, thank you, uh, Danny, for the uh, information that you gave about uh, our consulates here in uh, Houston. We are always looking to uh, to have uh, support for the companies who want to establish uh, businesses in UAE uh, in general, particularly in Dubai. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this region. So uh, I would like to start uh, by giving a special thanks you uh, thank you to your U.S. UAE Business Council, uh, our friend at uh, Safer Show, our partner uh, Dubai FTI, and everyone else who made today's timely event even possible. While we must meet uh, virtual today, I believe there, that uh, these online enge engagements are critical to keeping the conversation moving to in the week of uh, COVID-19. And I hope you find today's presentation in, 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 improve, in, uh, informative and useful. I also look forward to the opportunity to speak with you all in person as soon as it's safe to do so. Before I begin, I would like to, start to, to provide some background about UAE consulate in Houston and the UAE relationship with Texas. In light of our current uh, circumstances, I also want to share important steps that UAE is keeping to support wider business community as we seek adapt or re rebuild uh, from uh, the impact of COVID-19. Today, gathering reflect our border community to take due, uh, doing business in UAE as attractive, transparent, and straightforward as possible. The UAE maintains a strong and dynamic relationship with the state of Texas. Over the past four years, Texas exported 10.9 billion worth of goods and service, services to the UAE, the second highest export total of all 50 states. <clears throat> Uh, lastly, as the global community continue to manage through the impact of coronavirus pandemic, I'd like to highlight some of the major measures that UAE has taken to maintain a strong economic environment and support businesses and individuals in need. At the federal level, the, the Central Bank of UAE has authorized $70 billion stimulus package that will allow banks and financial institutions to offer Continue, continued access to, uh, to funding for private sector companies and uh, small medium uh, enterprises. Moreover, the Ministry of Economy has reduced the number of fees, uh, services fees, further enhancing the ease of doing business in the process. Beyond the national, the national level, uh, each of UAE's seven Emirates has enacted additional measures to, sub, uh, to safeguard business and individuals in the line with the local circumstances. For example, the Dubai government has fully committed to support Emirates, Emirates Airline throughout this uh, crisis. Additionally, the Crown Prince of Dubai has announced a number of local stimulus measures to reduce the financial burden in, uh, on individuals uh, and companies. The Dubai Free Zone Council has announced a stimulus package to strengthen Dubai comprehensive and ensure business community for companies operating in the free zone. Dubai International Financial Center has rolled out its own support package for businesses partners, providing companies with added flexibility to financial relief. Uh, finally, the UAE Cabinet has recently and Dragon, a major uh, uh, rushful uh, amid to position our uh, business environments for future access. A few key adjustments include 
the appointment of two additional Ministry of Economy for international trade and for small uh, medium enterprises. And the uh, certain of Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology, led by His Excellency Dr. Sultan Al Jabr, who also served uh, service as the CEO of, of uh, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. These are just a few of the steps that we uh, that we have uh, taken to support businesses, and the UAE will continue to introduce opportunities, uh, measure to maintain a strong and re uh, resilient business environment that will. Uh, flourish in the future. I hope that we'll, uh, we'll have today event with a better understanding of the, of the, of the new market opportunities that are uh, emerging in Dubai and across the UAE. Please, if you have any uh, kind of question or need any support, we are here in Houston to support the companies who want to establish uh, business in UAE uh, in general and uh, by uh, uh, particularly with the, our partners with the uh, U.S. UAE Business Council and uh, Safe Earth Show uh, uh, legal firm. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, thank you. David, can I just ask you to take down that uh, screen share that you have and put His Excellency on the, up on the screen for everyone so they can see? That would be really helpful if you could do that for me, David. And then uh, next, um, I know we have, um, we're supposed to have uh, His Excellency Fahad al Gurgawi, but I'm not sure, I don't believe he's joined yet. Is that correct? Uh, I believe Saeed Al Wadi is, yes, is, is going to speak in his place. Saeed, we, we, you know, we know that you're Fahad's uh, sidekick, uh, and, uh, and, and you guys work together in tandem on so many important initiatives. So we appreciate very much uh, you speaking on his behalf this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Danny. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, of course, uh, Fahad uh, Al-Gargawi, the CEO of uh, Dubai FDI, is supposed to give this presentation, but I think he had the difficulty for logging in. I'm going to uh, uh, read his uh, speech on his behalf. Uh, First of all, thank you for joining us today for a discussion on the opportunities in the biologistics sector and how businesses and investors worldwide and particularly in the United States can profit from these opportunities. A big thank you uh, to Saifat Show and the US UAE Business Council for hosting this webinar series. Our sincere thanks also to the uh, U.S. Commercial Services for their support, uh, Saeed Al-Mahiri, uh, His Excellency, for uh, presenting with us, uh, our uh, UAE Embassy in uh, Council General in, in Houston, and our UAE Embassy in Washington. Joining us on this discussion uh, are Senior Executive of Dubai Exports, uh, Dubai South, the Aviation and Logistic Economic Zone, Dubai Airport Free Zone, Jabal Ali Free Zone, and Emirates Sky Cargo. Together, we will present uh, to you uh, the Dubai Advantage, the opportunities for partnership and investment in the logistics sector. Logistics forms a crucial part of the Government of Dubai Strategic Growth Plan. The importance of our focus on developing a vital global logistics hub become, became evident during the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. Dubai continuing investment in multimodal facilities and fracture, uh, infrastructure over decades has ensured that our city played no small role in ensuring a flow of essential goods along the COVID-19 supply chain. This includes humanitarian aid and shipment of essential goods. Many United Nations agencies have made Dubai their hub for distribution of personal protective uh, equipment, ventilators, ambulances, test kits, and food supplies to the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. The infrastructure has, however, primarily been developed to support trade, business, and investment flows. Dubai's geographical location at what we uh, like to call the center of the world has always been a strong incentive to invest in infrastructure that enhances global supply chain. We continue to invest in this development. Dubai is the city of the future and established an uh, established gateway to the Middle East for global businesses. We give you seamless access to a market of 2.4 billion consumers in the region. 
At the same time, Dubai is a global hub for trade and investment flows. This is a mature and growing infrastructure. Dubai offers strong reasons to invest in its logistics sector with infrastructure that includes the ninth largest sea and container port globally, the world's busiest airport, one of the world's largest airline network, an ultra modern highway system connecting to the neighboring countries and 3PL and climate controlled warehousing facilities. The UAE and the USA have a strong trading partnership. Since 2009, the UAE has been the top export market for, uh, for the US goods in the Middle East and North Africa region. Trade between the UAE and USA has increased by more than 40% during this decade. Uh, with total trade between the two countries uh, amounting to 24.3 billion US dollar in 2019. This uh, relationship is based on solid foundations, aircraft and spacecraft, electronics, passenger vehicles, precious metal. These are some of the high value US exports to the UAE, supported by mature logistic infrastructure. The UAE continues to be a diverse, stable, and secure country with global connectivity and a high ease of doing business. More than 200 nationalities and over 60% of Fortune 1000 companies have a presence in Dubai. The Dubai Plan 2021 includes logistics as a, as a key driver of growth. With the Expo 2020 coming up next year, the logistics landscape in Dubai is undergoing a rapid upgrade. To continue being among the finest in the world, our future focused vision and preparedness have positioned Dubai as one of the world's most important economic nodes. An ever-increasing demand of e-commerce, which has, which has seen unprecedented growth during the COVID-19 pandemic, combined with the rapid implementation of cutting-edge technologies of the future, have ensured Dubai positioning as a leading hub for logistics in the Middle East and globally. As a subsector, retail logistics is witnessing growing in investor interest. The UAE government continues to invest in logistics through its budgeted spend on infrastructure such as ports, roads, and so on. The federal budget for 2020 has allocated 2.7 billion US dollar or 14% of, uh, of its budget to infrastructure and economic resources. Dubai's budget for 2020 also stresses on development of, of infrastructure with 2.2 US dollar billion uh, earmarked specifically to develop infrastructure projects and their financing mechanism. The logistics sector benefited uh, directly uh, from the increased spending on support infrastructure. In addition, demand for modern logistic facilities continues to encourage new investments. We expect the biologistic sector to play a fundamental role in the post-COVID global economic recovery. I can assure you that the government of Dubai understand this and is determined to support uh, the sector. I invite you to be an integral part of this future. Our team at Dubai FDI, along with our government partners, is ready to help you in any matter required. One, to invest and identify and build the effective partnership and provide the information you may need. Please come and join hands with us as we invest in the future. Thank you for your time and attention. Your Excellency, thank you so much for those very kind remarks on behalf of His Excellency Fahad al Gawi, the CEO of Dubai FDI. Now I get to formally introduce you, sir, so that you can make a, a few remarks on behalf of Dubai Exports as, Dubai Expo, as the CEO of Dubai Exports. Uh, you've led Dubai Exports uh, uh, to ensure the success of the export sector in the Emirate of Dubai through providing guidance and practical support to overseas buyers and suppliers. Dubai Exports develops long-term growth strategies to help businesses expand and maximize opportunities uh, given by Dubai's unique position, as we've said, as a natural trade okay. gateway between the East and the West. Over to you, kind sir. Thank you for all that you do to promote business between the US and the UAE. 
please. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, everybody, uh, again. My name is Saad Al-Awadi. I am the CEO of Dubai Exports, an agency within the Dubai Economic Department. Uh, uh, I just continuation on what uh, Fahad uh, uh, in Fahad's speech about uh, infrastructure, logistics, and, and trade. Uh, the USA is the largest uh, economy in the world, of course, and uh, one with population with highest dispo uh, disposable income. The United States, the United States uh, consumes a huge range of goods and services, and does so in a astounding volumes, and that, that is why we have been targeting the country since 2011. Exporting uh, uh, halal and uh, export uh, is important as an estimated 3.45 million Muslims are living in the U.S., about 1.1% of the total U.S. population. There are 1.7 million Arab Americans in the, in the U.S. Dubai Export has um, uh, a number of successes in the U.S., uh, such as local perfume company uh, who, ha who is selling as perfume in over 300 uh, stores in the U.S. Uh, the, the total trade which Fahad mentioned uh, uh, is mainly uh, in, in these uh, sectors, machinery, precious metal, electrical uh, machinery, aircraft, vehicles, and, and so on. Uh, Dubai exports uh, activities in the U.S., of course, it's, they're several, but mainly is uh, we started our uh, trade mission to the U.S. since 2011. Uh, every year until uh, 2019, in coordination with FDI, uh, we uh, we we had a couple of exporting to the USA seminars in the US uh, consulate here in, in Dubai. We initiated discussion with the US consulate in Dubai for African companies to use Dubai as a gateway to USA to export under the AGWA agreement and so on. So there is a lot of uh, activities both in the UAE and the US for promoting trade between our countries. Going forward, uh, the way export is working uh, for the following. We are looking at initiative to support food security, medical, health, PPEs, manufacturing, and so on. And second, collaboration in, on technology transfer, especially in the area of hydroponic growing, agri agribusiness, agriculture, and so on. Developing trade link and re-export hub and uh, business to business uh, uh, matchmaking meeting uh, during uh, major exhibitions in dubai like gulf food air show uh, jitex and so on and last uh, cooperation with e-commerce companies to use dubai uh, for its uh, regional expansion thank you very much thank you yeah. I, I couldn't get the mute button off there very much appreciate uh, those kind remarks, and I think there's going to be uh, some questions on some of that uh, when we get to the Q&A for sure about some of the services that Dubai Exports uh, uh, provides and Dubai FDI, for that matter. If we could go, please, next to my very good friend uh, and colleague, Moslin Ahmad, who we've worked with at uh, Dubai South. Uh, he's the CEO of Logistics at, uh, District at Dubai South and someone that, again, we've worked with since, uh, since Dubai South was, was uh, first being, uh, initially being created. Mohsen's played an instrumental role in developing and setting up Dubai South and the Dubai Logistics Corridor. He has a logistic district, including all operations, maintenance, and business-related activities. Uh, if you don't know, Dubai South is a free zone that supports a number of activities, including logistics, aviation, Commercial, ex ex commercial exhibition, humanitarian, residential, and other related businesses around the Al Maktoum International Airport, which has ambitions to become one of the largest airports in the world. And also, if you don't know, it's, it's co-located around uh, or at uh, Expo 2020 and the southern corridor of Dubai uh, across from Jebel Ali and uh, the, the activities at the Jebel Ali port. 
My dear friend Mosin, over to you, and thank you so much. Thank you, Danny. Appreciate it. You know, it's a pleasure being here. Good morning to the folks in the U.S. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, or Consul General uh, Zaid and Harry, for your time here. Uh, it's actually it's a pleasure to be here. It's something I'm quite passionate about. To talk about the sort of the logistics uh, of and the, way, the role Dubai plays in 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 uh, in sort of becoming sort of a regional hub uh, when it when 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 we're talking about logistics. Uh, uh, I think Danny had one of the sort of the a video I haven't seen, so I guess the uh, picture uh, sort of explains a thousand words. Well, it was a great uh, for that what you showed. Most do you have a video now that you want to play? No, I don't have a video. I've got a okay. presentation, okay. so so I think I'm just gonna if you if it goes to the next slide, please. There we go. Yeah. David can do that. David's got the key. So I'll, yeah, I'll skip this go. one. This is just an introduction, which has already been done. I think if you we look at the logistics industry, it is a key one of the key sectors uh, uh, when it comes to sort of a development uh, of, of logistics. Certainly in Dubai's economy, it, it plays a major role. It's one of the key pillars uh, of, of, of the economic, economic contribution to, to, to Dubai. And, and certainly we're expecting sort of a growth in there and predominantly because of the great infrastructure that has been put by various entities uh, that were, uh, play a role in there being a sort of our uh, flagship two sort of two key players with DP World and, and, and Emirates of Sky Cargo. Uh, I think today when we look at sort of uh, the, 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 the value of this industry is quite a significant amount. Uh, we're looking about in the year about 220 billion uh, terms worth close to about $60 billion uh, of there. Uh, the technology has played a major role in that, in the logistics, and it played uh, sort of a very contributed when, when especially in, during the pandemic, with all those, uh, what, what we have seen. If we go next, please. Uh, David? Yeah. And I think what, one of the things that, that because of that infrastructure, uh, sort of, that brought us the two countries between U.S. and UAE very close when it came to the trade, and and the fact that UAE is one of is the largest sort of uh, trading partner in, in the region uh, with with the uh, with US, I mean U.S. UAE trade, and that's mainly because of the great logistics infrastructure that is available that many of the U.S. companies are benefiting uh, to serve. Uh, the, not just the UAE, but I think the greater region of sort of Middle East, North Africa, and 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 we've seen recently even a shift to serving the Southeast Asia, where some of the uh, U.S. companies were taking Dubai as a as a hub. Uh, so 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 the region has grown uh, more and more, and again thanks to the great connectivity uh, that 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 it represents. Of course, that also resulted in a lot of job creations within the U.S., which we which we are very proud of. Uh, that we are contributing to that, uh, but I think today we also, I mean, I think one thing that we shouldn't forget is what happened a couple of days ago with, with sort of the UAE's launch of the of the satellite mission, which was a significant milestone to showcase the strength of of, of the country in in taking the economy to to a much uh, sort of uh, a greater uh, sort of Look, greater sectors that that we it wasn't unheard of so in some of the Middle East countries. Next, please. I think one of the things that was you're going to probably see it in most of the other slides with my colleagues who are following me is just the location of Dubai. It's a it's a city uh, uh, sort of uh, with two airports. It's, you know, uh, it's one of the few cities in the world with with have two airports. Uh, of course, Dubai International is the largest international uh, busiest airport that we see it on the far uh, sort of the right, or I would say the north of uh, of, of, of Dubai. For the folks who, who are not familiar with Dubai, uh, I think the landmark there you see Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building. Uh, and and then if we look at sort of the, uh, the shape on the, on the far left, where where the Dubai South is located, it's very close on sort of connecting to Jabal Ali Port. Uh, and then you've got the opportunity that where, 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 where Danny was irritating. It is where Al Maktoum International Airport is, is, is getting developed. And also you see a lot of quite an extensive 
network of today and some of the future uh, connectivity being in the road or the rail or even the sort of the metro uh, connectivities that are there uh, today. Next, please. Uh, Dubai South, as, as an entity, uh, we use the terminology that uh, sort of started with this, where, where the airport is the heart of this project, is a, is a terminology that was used by the University of Cal uh, North Carolina, uh, uh, where they called Aerotopolis, where, the air, where a city is being built around the airport, the heart of it is the airport. Uh, we've got industrial areas, which we're calling it the logistics district. Uh, and, and of course, what we also have, we're very, uh, you know, uh, proud to have the name uh, is the Mohammed bin Rashid Aerospace Hub, where it's pretty, very much focused on on the uh, aviation sector. Uh, with that, uh, Danny reiterated is sort of the expo is part of the Dubai South uh, sort of greater community, uh, and then we also got number of residential uh, areas that are related to to the period. So the concept was to create a sort of a uh, working and living uh, environment uh, in there, and and beyond there, sort of towards the top of that is of course that's the where we get the connectivity to the Jabal Ali uh, seaport, uh, and and for the people who have been uh, or ha or planning on going sort of hopefully my next year when we have the air show, which shows one of the best gathering between the trading communities between UAE and 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 the and the US is is where we we host that air show. Uh, which is both from a commercial and our sort of military gathering that that happens every every two years. Next, please. When we looked at the supply chain and the logistics many years ago, and we wanted to educate because Dubai was part of sort of this. Uh, we were all part of EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And and then we we when we started the logistics district, we decided okay. Uh, what you know? What can we do to change that attitude? Because the focus when you look at EMEA was mainly with Europe and the less. And we in, we interviewed a lot of supply chain chiefs who are responsible for the EMEA, and we tried to find out what are the sectors. And then we this is sort of the sectors where we realized that Dubai could play a role, excluding the Europe and looking at the sort of Middle East, North Africa, and Southeast Asia. And we looked at the sectors. So we looked at sort of fashion, life science. I think we, the, the, the folks here, uh, sort of uh, Danny and the team, uh, successfully arranged one on the healthcare. Uh, also, of course, perishable. We also had, I think, something about perishable and sort of growing vertical farming earlier when we were meeting physically in Dubai. IT and telecom, e-commerce will play every role, which I will come later on. And of course, when I'm talking about the spare parts, the spare parts, these are critical spare parts for oil and gas. Uh, spare parts for aviation sectors, and and of course uh, we also have the, the sort of the heavy when it comes to automotive. They were the sort of the the six sectors that made uh, sort of position can position any company that wants to serve this region. Uh, and to the extent that even some of the CIS countries of of, of like Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, uh, also are now uh, looking at Dubai to sort of supplying. Uh, becoming sort of a hub for 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 that particular region. Next, please. When when we look when we did this, and I think this is a sort of uh, uh, something that we we managed to execute, but it was the vision set very early stages by our leadership. The late Sheikh Rashid of Dubai, uh, God bless his soul, sort of uh, when he started the sort of Jabal Lali port. Uh, they also sort of that was in the late 70s, and then they started uh, successfully the Jabal Ali Free Zone in 1985. Uh, it, it, they, there was always that vision to create an airport, and when we came in 2006, we sort of that vision with the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, uh, and then the, sort of uh, uh, it, it was expanded to what we have today as the as Dubai South, and. It was connected to what is known as sort of the Dubai Logistics Corridor. It created a huge in, sort of industrial area environment of about 200 square kilometer. It connected the sea, one of the largest seaports or one of the, I'd say one of the key global uh, seaports uh, to, to an, uh, sort of a future developed airport that's going to be one of the largest ones. And, and 
removed all the sort of the barriers to connect from the ship rail all the way to an aircraft in, in sort of four hours, something that would take probably in a normal time, it would have taken a couple of days. And that just shows that how Dubai was very proactive in ensuring this. This was done in 2010. It's not something new. Uh, that, uh, I think my colleague from Emirates will be sharing something quite unique when we also developed a similar uh, setup when we connected the two airports from a cargo perspective that won a couple of many awards globally for, for the success story of that. Next, please. I think why sort of, I think the word here, why Dubai, so, but I think the question is why Dubai? Dubai has that great land connectivity to the GCC countries. It's got a great sea connectivity with all the sort of, uh, I will not spill the show from my colleague Justin, he, he will be talking about the sea, but, but that connectivity with all the major shipping lines calling it, and of course the airports, two airports, one was passenger and cargo, and one is pure, has been sort of, during the pandemic became a pure cargo, and it showed because that infrastructure, we had a lot more freighters coming in and becoming a sort of a hub for many of the countries to get their PPEs, to get all the medical equipment that was that. And, 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 and we, in, in fact, we saw, you know, a sort of a growth in, in, in the freighter where, uh, during the, the, the pandemic. But collectively between all this sort of the infrastructure, and on top of that, when you look at leg legislations and sort of common law that are there under the DIFC's court, it enabled trade. It brought the whole sort of glued it between, between the, the great uh, physical infrastructure with the soft infrastructures like the DIFC cores, like the Dubai customs procedures, uh, the sort of brought in dual solution that was very earlier showed by Danny of creating a dual warehouse system. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, about the flexibility of setting up the business, the licensing, that together, it, it cemented the position or sort of what, what Dubai offered when it came to the logistics. Next, please. You know, you might see, um, you know, I was introduced at Dubai South, but I think one area I wanted to cover was a problem, you know, we took the American, we're calling it Easy Dubai, and it's not EZ. Uh, so, so, so there is a, this is an English, an American word. This is a, an Easy Dubai is an e-commerce zone. Where we do, and this is the concept was, was okay. We've done the log, we have the logistics. We've got the in, great infrastructure. How do we take it up to sort of the e-commerce uh, zone in the next week? And when we established this, UAE as a region is very much internet penetration is one of the highest globally uh, the number of hours that people spend on on on, on internet is, is 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 quite high and and of course the people are very much connected with with their smartphones or, or sort of social media and and that position that to be why dubai's internet uh, or sort of uh, e-commerce was one of the highest 4.2 percent it's still low compared to the global but consider it one of the highest when you had a sort of a regional average below two percent next please What was important that during the pandemic, we saw some sort of, you know, I would say numbers that was unimaginable. We had a growth in UAE, 50, more than 50%. The Middle East had an e-commerce growth of 106. And this is sort of, even when you come to the transactions, we had a huge number of transactions. It's a region that people are still want to be in that sort of bricks and mortar, the physical side. But, but during the pandemic, because that infrastructure was great, it, brought, it changed. I mean, surprisingly, at one particular moment, we had 65% of the retailers were, were, were e-commerce as opposed to those of uh, bricks and mortar. Okay, we're not going to see that figure uh, now that things are easing off. And thanks to the sort of the great success our uh, sort of the government had in controlling the, the COVID-19. But it showed how well the city was equipped. The second one was we brought in a lot of increase of the payment. We are moving towards a smart government, we're moving towards uh, creating a digital economy. A lot of transaction that people were reluctant in doing it uh, before uh, by credit cards, it, we had an increase on there. So less cash on delivery, which is always a challenge when it came to the logistics operators. Today, people have been educated, people are more used to it, and they have realized the comfort. Next please. 
And when we looked at this during the pandemic, obviously it was for the basic necessities. Uh, we had the supermarkets, the food, the pharmaceuticals, electronics, computer, and and this not only across in UAE, but I think in the region. So my sort of, uh, if you are a US company that is in any part of these businesses or anything that I spoke about earlier in the, in the tech sector, I think it's a good time uh, to, to, to look beyond the US market and see how you can explore uh, the, the market in, in, in sort of penetrating in the, in the Middle East. Sector. Next please. When we looked at this, we, we had to look at sort of an area where we had a very cost efficient, it was purpose built, multi models, and of course, sustainability. And, and of course, a sort of a very streamlined uh, customs and licensing process. So, so what, what did, uh, Easy Dubai was successfully launched in January last year by His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Rashid, who's the ruler of Dubai and our Prime Minister of UAE. And in September, uh, last year also, Dubai launched an e-commerce strategy to ease off the business for e-commerce, the people who are coming in. And of course, e-commerce, yes, there is the technology, but logistics plays a major role. And, and I think uh, the only reason we're managing to do a lot of this is, is, is sort of is the, the, the possibility that the logistics environment that we have created. Next, please. The zone is adjacent. Uh, I think we talked about the airport, where we see the word, uh, the house, that's where the Emirates Sky Cargo, that my colleague from Emirates will be talking about later, uh, where you see the word Easy Dubai, uh, the smaller one closer to the map, that's where the all other airlines operate there is. But it, it's a zone that we just recently created that brings in a number of co uh, components into that. Next, please. It's brought in sort of, the large e-fulfillment center that many of you may have seen, like the Amazons, or, or what we have a local version of, of moon.com. Uh, it also has a sort of, we brought in the last mile players uh, with e-commerce, return and repair was, was a very important bit. And, and the business block was to, is an environment that we are creating for, uh, for small SMEs to start up the business to, to come into the, the, the domain, because that's also quite a large uh, number of people who are either on the Instagram or the Facebook that we are, we, are, we are catering to. And we also looked at right now to develop data centers because of the digital economy with a huge focus on, on the data, and w which we are looking to be part of this. Next, please. As the video that Danny shared earlier, uh, which we showed the video of our executive chairman, uh, Executive Khalifa uh, Zafin, with DB Shankar, uh, we, break, we created, we said, let's change the game and when it came to the free zone. Let's see how we can bring a bonding and non-bonding under one roof, uh, which we have successfully done with uh, sort of uh, D.B. Shankar, uh, sort of the German operators, with Unilever, uh, and, and, and they came under one roof where they had a free zone facility, but accessibility from non-bonded and from the bonded area. And, and it has brought a success uh, very successful that you brought the operation very efficiently, bringing both these parties. And and to, I think soon we're going to be announcing some more uh, key developments that that people are bit, uh, coming into this line. Uh, we also had a very success with DHL, uh, who, who who have moved in and and benefiting from this. And hopefully soon uh, we will we we we'll probably talking about the the, the other integrators uh, who will be joining. To, to take the benefit of this sort of new setup that has been set up in Dubai very recently. Next, please. This is just a short list of companies that are operational at the moment between local players, a mixture uh, who have taken uh, home. Uh, of course, you know, Amazon, many of us have relied on during this pandemic to, to ensure that we have the essentials delivered. Uh, similarly, noon here in this part of the world, we, we, it was a, another success story that's coming up. Uh, we were very, uh, for I think one out of all the brands that you buy, there's one particular one maybe you're not familiar with, a company called First Cry right there in the middle of the screen. That's an Indian company that was purely e-commerce player that decided for the first time to move out of India to come and they chose Dubai as a hub to serve Middle East and North Africa. 
uh, and 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 this just shows the sort of the Dubai. And today they're very successful. They are supplying the entire Middle East out of out of their company here, and and soon they're moving into through Kenya to, to serve the, the the African uh, market uh, as as we speak, which is, shows the sort of a, one of the success stories. With that, I wanted to, to thank everybody. I'll be around to ask any questions, uh, and, and I'm sure I'm leaving some room for the rest of my colleagues who will be covering in a much more detail some of the operational, like the seaport and the airport uh, that, that we will have. Thank you very much, and I look forward to having receiving your questions. Molson, thank you so much. Uh, I have to tell you, have coming out, having come out to visit you many times at Dubai South, I'm always so impressed with what you're doing there, what the organization is doing. And I'm equally impressed with our next speaker and what he's doing, Faisal Jassim, who's the manager of the Americans region for Jebel Ali Free Zone, or DAPSA. And uh, Faisal is in charge of proactive sales in JAPSA and works to attract, maintain, and enhance industrial FDI and corporate relationships with multinational companies. JAPSA, which is one of the flagship free zones of, of DP World, has leveraged a pro, uh, to its proximity to Jebel Ali Port, the busiest harbor in the Middle East, to become home to thousands of businesses from over 100 companies, excuse me, 100 countries uh, with thousands of companies, sustaining more than 135,000 jobs and contributing to 23.8% of Dubai's GDP, and facilitating over $98 billion in annual trade. Faisal, uh, always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure to come out to your uh, to your facility as well and visit. And post COVID, uh, you and most of them are going to be one of my first each one of my first stops on my on my trips down the road. So please, over to you. Thank you so much, Danny and Mahsan. Honestly, I mean, uh, you guys as the organizers, putting Mahsan first and then me is fantastic because uh, you know we just. Uh, it's symbiotic, so we just complete each other, and it just goes uh, to show as well the synergies that we have between our our, our two free zones. Um, I also want to thank Marcin for doing a lot of the heavy lifting and providing a lot of the information, so I don't have to go over it. Um, so can we go to the next slide, please? And the slide after that. Perfect. So I'm going to give you a brief breakdown or a brief uh, presentation about JAFSA and DP World, Dubai Ports World. So DP World is in approximately 40 countries with uh, more than 78 ports and terminals around the world. Um, we are the fourth uh, largest port operator, the Jebel Ali Port, that's located in JAFSA and in Dubai, is the 10th largest port in the world and the only one in the top 10 um, that is not in the Far East. So it's really a mark of uh, achievement for us to be on that list and something that we're very, uh, we're very proud of. Uh, fun fact. It is actually the busiest port of call for the U.S. Navy outside of the United States. So that's something that is uh, that is very interesting as well. Um, now, again, as a port and as a free zone, we really want to, um, you know, we consider ourselves global trade enablers. So this is where we try to bring the whole mosaic uh, of trade uh, enablement services and to link the ports that we have all across the world. You can see the little yellow dots all across the screen all around the world and something we're working very hard to. Um, and to provide really end-to-end -end solutions for our clients, which I'm going to explain later in later slides. So next, please. All right. So as was mentioned earlier by Saad Al Arabi from uh, Dubai Export, you know we are linked to more than almost almost three billion people around the world. Um, another fun fact, you know, it takes a shorter amount of time to fly from Dubai to Mumbai, which is the commercial and uh, economic hub of India, than it does from Mumbai. To New Delhi, which is the which is the political, uh, you know, political capital of India. So again, the relationships that we have with the regional countries are very deep and go back a very long way. Um, you know, like just, uh, you know, for example, 90% of Iraq cargo, for example, comes to the Jebel Ali port. As DP World, we handle approximately 25% of India's trade. So we manage uh, a bunch of ports and facilities over there, which I'll explain later on as well. And we can reach anywhere in the GCC within one day. So again. You know, we have a lot of clients that use Dubai as a springboard for the rest of the region, spe specifically, for example, Saudi. So I'm working on a lot of clients now that, you know, are also dealing, for example, in hydrocarbons that want a facility in Jabza to service Saudi Arabia, which is kind of counterintuitive, considering that Saudi Arabia is the hydrocarbon capital of the world. But again, 
Um, no offense to our people in Houston, one of the hydrocarbon capitals of the world. Um, so again, to consider that, that they're trying to service Saudi Arabia out of Dubai, again, it's because of the investment that we did in infrastructure, as Mohsen mentioned, both hard infrastructure in terms of you know, uh, the ports and the roads, et cetera, but also soft infrastructure in terms of the technology, in terms of the rules and regulations. This is why our customs procedure, for example, takes approximately an hour to clear, and other regional countries might take you know, a week in certain instances, um, you know, up to three months to clear. Next slide, please. All right, so when we talk about you know, JAFSA, we have to talk about it in terms of its whole infrastructure. So in terms of the Jebel Ali port, so the Jebel Ali port has a cargo capacity of 23 million um, containers. Um, and we uh, as well, so that's obviously, you know, we were, we were centered around, we were established in 1985 to support the port, is to bring as much container traffic and as much, uh, you know, port traffic as possible. And that is still our mission now. So Dubai has 24 free zones, each catering to a different industry. Ours caters to industries that do manufacturing, logistics, and trade. So anything that moves the port is something that we're interested in. Um, logistics obviously is a backbone for us. Um, so as was mentioned, you know we have uh, you know we, we we have multiple free zones and multiple as well trading partners that we have in our in our port. Last year we did approximately 100 billion dollars of trade from our Jebel Ali port, so it's something that's very sizable. And we have as well the logistical infrastructure. So. Now, time and time again, I, I'm, I'm in discussions currently, being in public, obviously in sales, discussions with many multinational, many large companies. And you know, you guys know for sure, especially you guys in, in logistical background, that the largest cost for a company is logistics. If they can get logistics down, if they can really you know, get it under control, run it efficiently, then their business thrives. Uh, that was especially the case under the COVID situation where you knew where people you know, ran their, a, a very tight ship and a great operation because they survived and in fact thrived. And those that didn't or didn't invest or didn't think about it in terms of logistics, they kind of fell to the wayside. We've seen it as well, you know, regionally. So companies that went to other free zones or companies that went to other, for example, um, locations to establish their business just to save a few, you know, pennies here and there really in the grand scheme of things ended up paying for it because when everything was locked down, they didn't have access to you know, the, the digital platform to conduct their business. They didn't have access to you know, a very developed uh, logistical solution. And we've seen that. I mean, even if you go onto news articles, and I think our excellency, His Excellency, our, our Consul General in Houston can attest to that. Dubai and the UAE in general were providing aid shipments in terms of PPEs, in terms of food aid, in terms of any sort of aid during the COVID uh, pandemic. To regional countries and when i'm talking about regional countries not just the uae or not just the gcc in the middle east i'm talking about cis i'm talking about africa india etc so it's something that you know we're very proud of and the reason we could do that is because of the infrastructure that we have so next slide please all right so uh, i think uh, mohsen uh, touched up on this so the upside down f as you see the monkey wrench there is the jebel ali port uh, to the south, you'll have the El Maktoum International Airport, where Mersin is located. That little snake on the side that you see, looks like snakes and ladders, that's the um, rail terminal that is under construction, uh, with the main station being in the Jebel Ali port as well. And then you have two major highways as well linked. And that little black zigzag that you have there is the logistical corridor, which Mersin was, was, was an integral part in, in setting it up. So again, you have access to the airport, you have access to the seaport, we have access hopefully soon to the rail port, and access to two major um, land ports, which is through highways, all within a custom bounded area. Again, being in logistics, that must be music to your ears because you can literally get any sort of good in and out within 30 minutes. Um, you know, from port to airport, it takes 30 minutes. I did it in 20, but again, you know, you, uh, you don't hold me to, uh, to those, uh, to those standards. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so when we talk about Jabal Ali, we have to talk about in terms of, of what we can offer. So we have a one-stop shop model where all relevant government departments and ministries are located um, within our free zone and are also located online. So almost 99% of the services can be done online. This was especially relevant due, during the COVID situation where I myself and the team registered so many companies online. You know, it would have been great to meet the client and shake their hands when we give them the trade license, but we didn't have to do that during the COVID situation. Um, they register their, their companies remotely. Um, you can clear your customs, you can renew your trade license, you can renew your visas, pay your utility bills, et cetera, whatever it is online. Um, in this world, you know, in this very dynamic and very fluid world that we live in, this is very important. So it's ironic, but a lot of clients come to JAFSA 
and because they don't have to physically be in Jaffa or Dubai to run their business. Um, we have a, a variety of facilities. So we uh, lease out offices, we lease out warehouses, we lease out plots of land, and we also have customized development solutions. So this is for larger clients. So we've done that. We, so when a client has like 70,000 square feet uh, of a facility that they need built and above, what we can do is we can build it for them and lease it out to them over a long period of time. Again, this is fantastic because you don't need to go to your board of directors uh, and you know, fight tooth and nail for a large capital expenditure. It's just a nominal uh, operating expenditure uh, over the years. We've done that for General Electric. So when you come to Dubai and you drive down to go to uh, Abu Dhabi, you see it, the General Electric building. We've done that for SEVA, we've done that for UPS, and we're doing that for others as well. Next slide, please. Perfect. Slide after. All right, so just a, a snapshot of logistics in JASA. So we have more than 390 logistical companies um, in JASA. As you can see, some of the, you know, the well-known names are, are, are down there as well. Uh, we're, you know, it's, it's a, really a backbone for us um, in JASA. And when I say that, I, it's not a marketing spiel or it's not you know, like something cliche to say. It's very important. So when I, a client comes to me today, and, and I continue, continue to do that to, to, to clients and talk to them about it, when they come to us, you know, we tell them, listen, instead of investing heavily on day one with a, a warehouse operations, the fleet of vehicles, with an army of staff, et cetera, just to manage your logistics, I suggest you come in, you know, on a manageable scale, uh, whether you go with a small office, a small warehouse, et cetera, and outsource your logistics to, you know, a third party provider. You know, we have more than 390 companies that would love to handle your logistics. So this is where you guys can come in and really provide your logistical solutions to the client. Next slide, please. All right, so in terms of our ports and terminal, again, it's, it's, it's honestly, you know, we, we've designed it and we've, uh, we've, we've really planned it with the logistical industry in mind. We wanted to make sure to capture as much um, of the logistical landscape and infrastructure as we can. So our port is multifunctional, our terminals, you know, we can welcome all sorts of, of goods in terms of containerized goods and even, you know, the dangerous and non-dangerous goods. Um, you know, containerized goods, uh, row, row, low, low, break bulk, um, you know, even whoa, whoa, walk on, walk off. So we have a lot of, for example, animals coming in now. So you guys in Texas, if you have, you know, your prized cattle you want to send across, we'll be happy to welcome them. And we're connected to more than 150 destinations around the world. So again, you know, you guys obviously in logistics know that having, for example, an uh, airport that's connected to so many destinations is important for your business. Same thing goes for ports. So, you know, I think we were giving the example earlier of Africa or India, for example. Let's just give the example of East Africa. So let's say you're dealing in East Africa and you have, I don't know, a bottle of water or a shipment of water that you need to send over there. You go to other regional ports, they might do one shipment a week, once every two weeks. For us, it's more than one a day. The reason is because of the frequency of service that we have and the critical mass of traders, of infrastructure, of you know ports of call, et cetera, that we have that we've built. It took us 40 years to build the infrastructure that we have um, in order to you know to really connect the world. Next slide, please. Right, perfect. So the Jebel Ali port, again, as I mentioned, we're connected to more than 150 um, you know des destinations around the world. Last year we handled 14 million containers. Uh, we have as well the Al Maktoum International Airport, which much much been touched on. You know, we're connected to land, as I mentioned earlier, so we can reach anywhere in the GCC within one day. And the digital infrastructure, the backbone, which I think Mohsen and my other colleagues mentioned and, 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 and touched upon, is very, very, very important. I mean, I know it's, a, it's it, again, just, you know, I know it's a cliche thing to say that we invest in infrastructure and all that, but honestly, during this time of COVID and during this changing world, that has honestly reaped so much benefits and so many dividends. Um, uh, you know, in, in, in this time and place. Again, clients come in, they can clear their customs, they can clear the goods all online, they can do everything online, even for clients that, you know, are restricted from traveling or whatever it is, everything can be done online. So you wouldn't have the first three, you know, um, quadrants without having the fourth. It's co they all complement each other. Next slide, please. Okay, we have our own logistical entity, a sister logistical entity established in 2018 called uh, Smart Solution Logistics. Now, don't worry, uh, Smart Solution Logistics is not meant to be a competitor to the logistical in uh, industry. It is actually meant to be uh, a complementer. So we have a lot of logistical companies, for example, that might have taken a big order on and they don't have the capacity to meet it or might not have a specific service 
that they want to offer to a client, but in order for them to get you know, the big deal, uh, they would have to offer so many different services. So this is where Smart Solution Logistics comes in and uh, you know, helps and facilitates uh, you know, logistical flow to Dubai and to the Jebel Adi port specifically. And they have the whole mess or the whole range of, of logistical solutions that can offer them. So you know, it's, they've been great uh, in establishing and helping uh, clients come in. But again, in terms of a free zone and in terms of a port, we're very agnostic in terms of which logistical provider you go to. Um, in fact, I've introduced you know, companies to other logistical providers and we're happy to do that. As long as you're in Dubai, as, in, as long as you're in the UAE and you use our ports, then, then you know, we're winners at the end of the day. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, as I was mentioning, there are our soft infrastructure Dubai Trade, which is another sister entity. So almost 99% of the services can be done online. Uh, and not just you know renewal of trade licenses and, and and visas for example renewal etc. But also in terms of insurance, in terms of customs brokerage, in terms of um, you know in terms of even nominating hauliers for your, your your cargo to and from the port to your you know your destination etc. All that can be done online. So we've made really massive investments uh, in that in you know in our digital infrastructure, and that is something that has really you know reaped benefits uh, uh, now. Next slide, please. The slide after that. So just to give you a, a you know a snapshot of the trade volumes that we have between JAFSA uh, and the USA and JAFSA and the UAE specifically. So I believe you know the the, the trade volumes I think were uh, approximately uh, 25 billion dollars. Um, and you can see the major industries, the major imports and major exports that we have in JAFSA. Again, the USA is the third our third uh, top importer and our seventh uh, top exporter um, in the free zone in the in the port. Next slide, please. And it's been increasing over the years, so something that we're very happy and we're very proud of. We have almost 400 U.S. companies in JASA that employ almost 14,000 uh, 14, people. And, uh, you know, our trade flows have been fantastic. So almost, uh, you know, a fifth of the U.S. UAE uh, trade flows has been coming and has been attributed to our port um, and our free zone. So that's something that, you know, we're very, we're very proud of and we hope to increase as well in the future. Next slide, please. All right, so this is a very interesting project. So DP World has been undergoing or has been conducting and putting forth projects, uh, bridge projects that we have. So our first bridge project was Project India Bridge. So as I mentioned earlier, DP World is a heavy investor in India. In fact, DP World until very, very recently was the largest FDI investor in India. We were overtaken by Saudi Aramco. Uh, but again, we're the second largest um, FDI investor in India. We manage six uh, ports in India, we have 13 inland facilities, and we have two logistical companies and growing. So we manage 25% or we handle 25% of India's trade. It's something we're very proud of. Now, India is a fantastic country. It has a lot of potential. Um, you know, it's a growing population. It's a democratic country as well. So again, um, you know, all these factors factor in in terms of it being a, a, you know, a powerhouse, an economic powerhouse. However, the issue with India, what we tend to find with a lot of clients is, is that the infrastructure or the logistical infrastructure is not developed. So this is where we come in with our value proposition to say, you know what, maybe we can change that and we can, um, you know, we can, we can really assist the clients. So the bridge project is where we bridge the UAE and India and India and the UAE and vice versa. So we can literally get a, you know, your cargo, your box from your factory in Jafsa to the end user's door in India and vice versa. So think about it in terms of supply chain and thinking about it in terms of distribution. So it's been a fantastic project that we've, we've been conducting. We have an on-site, on-the-ground, massive team in India. So if you guys need any introductions to that, we'll be happy to do that. Um, you know, this project as well is our first project in terms of a bridge project, but we're also working on other bridge projects to Africa, to Latin America, and others as well. So this is where we, you know, the first slide that I showed you, the mosaic with the little yellow dots, that's where we're really trying to bring it together and really trying to, you know, connect the dots in terms of, uh, in terms of trade. Call it, you know, the UAE or Dubai's own version of its Silk Road. Next slide, please. And with that, I conclude my presentation. We ha will be happy to take any questions at the uh, at the end of the session. And thank you all for joining. Thank you so much, Faisal. Very, very much appreciated. Very, very comprehensive brief. I'm sure uh, the observers and the attendees will be uh, appreciate getting all of that online later. Now, I'd like to very much. Uh, uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome 
Jamal Ben Marboub, who's the Senior Director Sales Division of Dubai Airport Free Zone. Uh, Jamal oversees the development of business plans, sales strategies, and planning for Dubai Airport's Free Zone. Uh, Dubai Airport's Free Zone offers a gateway to the Middle East and Africa and Asia that is unrivaled in connectivity to, to Europe, the, the subcontinent, and, and the Far East. It's 1,600 registered companies and 15,000 professionals benefit from direct access to Dubai International Airport, the world's busiest uh, international airport. Before uh, Jamal begins his presentation, we'll show a very short video. Please, Jamal, uh, or please, David, start the video. Wait, this says DAPSA. Is that, yes, that's right, that's correct. We shape and measure it because time shifts. It races. It
Jamal, thank you very, very much for that video. Can I ask you to make your comments, please? And we're coming up to the top of the hour, so I'm going to ask you and everyone else to just be as, uh, as short as possible. Please, thank you. Uh, thank you, Danny. Uh, Your Excellency, Dubai team, uh, good morning and good evening, everybody. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, I would like to thank the Dubai team for giving us the chance to be part of this uh, webinar. And I would like to thank Mohsen and Faisal for highlighting a lot of uh, that, uh, information about Dubai and being the business hub of the Middle East. Uh, there is no doubt about it that Dubai is the right place when you want to set up a business in, in the Middle East. Not just Dubai, I would say the whole UAE. Uh, my focus will be now more of a DAVZA and how you can set up a business and what DAVZA can help you to do uh, to grow in, from Dubai to, to the MENA region, I would say. Uh, the, the strategy that we have in DAVZA is basically your growth is our success. So having said that, DAVZA will, will, will spend a lot of time not thinking uh, how to set up a business, more thinking how to make you grow the business. And that's how we reverse the formula in, in Dubai Airport Free Zone. Because being Dubai, being in UAE, yes, you can set up a business anywhere, whether it's uh, on and offshore or onshore. Uh, the fact that uh, Dubai UAE rules that says if you set up a company in the mainland, you have to have a local sponsor. That's why the benefit of the free zone comes in hand and that you own the business 100%. Uh, DAVs have taken that uh, advantage from the government and we reversed the formula. We said many people can set up a business in UAE and Dubai, but how, how can we make them grow? And that's the logo of the DAVs and the slogan says free to grow. We will take you from the day you establish your business in DAVs and we'll introduce you to the government uh, entities in Dubai. I would say such as the FDI, Dubai FDI. I would say that such as Dubai Exports. I would say such as Dubai Chamber. Those government has been created to help you guys to set up your business and grow from in the MENA region. We will start by growing up in the GCC countries, and then we will take you to the Middle East, and then from to Africa. The plan is set up in Davza. So basically, we focus on your growth. We focus on the companies being in Davza and going from Davza from UAE to, to, the, to the Middle East. Next slide, please. Uh, being, being, I would say, next to the airport, yes, it's an advantage, but again, it's, it's, it's not that many people will utilize it, uh, but it will give you a great advantage if you, will, you are coming to the region and you will be a heavy traveler going to the GCC countries, going to the Middle East countries, going to Africa, to expand your business from, from Dubai itself. Next slide, please. Uh, like my other colleagues mentioned, and again, all the free zone has the, has the, the same law that came up to, ha to establish their businesses. Uh, DAVSA will help you in uh, getting your uh, work permit in, in Dubai, and also will do the medical check. That's part of requirement. We'd have it in-house. We have a, a custom uh, uh, offices in Dubai, so the Dubai Chamber, Dubai Police, Dubai Health Authority will, ha will have, we have, they have a premises in, in Davza. And then we have the, all the administrative uh, offices and services there, such as the housekeeping and, and other maintenance of the buildings. And then we do have the telecommunications and the banking system in Davza also, which the, most of the bank have opened their branches, such as Emirates MBD and uh, Mashrik Bank, so some of the names and the post office for your operations and like I said, telecommunication companies. Uh, next slide, please. Now, just to give you a general view of DAVSA and what can industry that DAVSA host, I would say 28% uh, of ICT and electronics, 10% consumer products, and 8% freight and logistics, 9% uh, investment businesses development and engineering, uh, building materials, 70% comes under the FMB, and 5% comes under medical equipment and pharmaceutical, which company have taken that to place to do their business. Next slide, please. Now, just to give you an, a taste of what kind of company do set up in, in Davza. Uh, yes, we, we, we see the slide that has an aerospace aviation companies. Yes, we do say a slide that has have automobiles, uh, pharmaceutical, and they are all big names, but I will not mention the SME companies who established, who, who entrepreneur who came from different parts of the world and have established the businesses, who have had the great successful stories in UAE, I would say. So looking at this big top multinational companies does not mean you as an SME company cannot come to Dubai and establish business. Yes, you have the right 
and you have the infrastructure to start your business in UAE and in Dubai. And Davzia, like I said, we focus to connect you with businesses. And that's where we come in the future of Davzia, where we will connect you to. Uh, we do a lot of focus industry networking events. We, before pandemic, I would say now it's a bit uh, difficult, but we will do a focus uh, industry networking event. We will we'll connect you to the buyer in the same industry. We will do a connection to the suppliers within the Davza community, which we have uh, 1,600 companies. We will choose those companies in the same industry and connect them to each other so they can do business together. We will connect you with different industry in the, in the ecosystem that you can do business from them. So having these multinational companies and, and some of them SME, we mix them together and we make them to do business together. So that kind of focus what we have in Davza. Next, please. Uh, yes, you can establish a, an office in Davza and with a license, the trading license, you can have a trading license, you can have a service license, you can have an e-commerce license. We have a project called Dubai Commerce City, which you can do a business there. We, you can have an industrial license with a warehouse. Uh, you can have a general trading license and start your business. Next slide, please. please. Now, when it comes to uh, setting a business, uh, an operation, you require a license and you require an office, a premises. We do have a different uh, solution for the, our uh, clients. Uh, custom, uh, custom, uh, customized office, a solution which is uh, equipped with office and table, chairs, uh, for ceiling, everything. So uh, basically, uh, you just come and plug in your computer and start working. We do have a, a package which is called premium pa package office or premium plus. Again, it's an, an office ready with the furniture or a business disk, if you're doubting that might not have your operation running and you're coming to explore the market, yes, we have a disk, which is a one person operation that you can have a place that to, you work from it and then you establish your uh, business in the region. And we, we have a light industry unit for company who have a connectivities, you have agents, a distributor, but you want to have your logistic products set up in Davs and, and cut the time of, a, of, of the uh, shipment from the region itself. Next slide, please. Uh, during the pandemic, Davza and other uh, uh, government bodies uh, have taken the steps to, to look at what we can, how can we help other companies. Uh, His, Highness, uh, His, ex His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Said, who is the chairman of uh, Emirates Airline and the chairman of Dubai Airport Free Zones, have come up with have an, an instructed us to come up with a lot of incentives and and maybe you can you can see in the bottom that exempt retailer from the lease uh, lease payment up to three months we have done that we postponed lease payment for the up to three months facilitating the financial payment into easier monthly installment we have done for the companies uh, canceling companies fine if there was uh, refunding security deposit on lease space and refunding uh, labor guarantees uh, to companies. So another money, this is just a sample what we are trying to mention here. But a lot of incentive have given to a lot of companies to, to reboost their business and grow again in, the, in, this, in this part of the, of, uh, of the region. Next, please. Uh, when it comes to a registration or, or saving more, we have given a lot of discounts. And, and, and if you've taken, an, a, let's say, a smart desk, you will be saving a 50% as we speak. And if you move to, decided to move to a light industry unit, a warehouse, you will be saving 30%. And if you decided to go one of the, uh, one of the packages of offices, you'll be saving 25, uh, 20, 20, 20 of that uh, rent. And there are a lot of uh, flexible uh, payment options there. All of this, next please, next please. As you can see, all of this are as incentives to let businesses to continue their, their, their growth in the region. Uh, what I mentioned, like I said in the beginning, Davza will, fo uh, will focus for you, will co-focus on your growth. Your growth is our success. Uh, setting up a business in UAE and in Dubai, it is great. You can set up a business anywhere, but again, you need a partner. What I will say, you need a partner that will Take your hand, connect you to a businesses that because you're coming from overseas, you would like to have a lot of uh, government bodies connectivity in UAE with the Ministry of Economy, with Dubai FDI, with Export, Dubai Chamber. You need to know who you contact in the custom. Davza will help you to grow your business. Again, with the networking events that we, did with, we do with the, uh, uh, different countries here that will let you, help you connect with other countries 
other businessmen that you can do a business with. At the end, I would like to thank everybody who's given me a chance to speak. And thank you, Danny. Thank you, everybody. Oh, as always, uh, thank you so, so much, Jamal. Great presentation. We really appreciate it. Uh, Al Hinton, who's advisor to Dubai FDI and the Dubai Advantage, uh, joined uh, Dubai FDI in 2014 after spending 12 years at the, as the area director for the Middle East North Africa region of the Ministry of Economic uh, Development and Trade, Government Ontario, uh, Canada. He had the responsibility there of 21 countries promoting trade and investment on behalf of the government. So he is a great expert on the region, a great expert on Dubai. I'm proud to call Al a close friend and longtime partner on many trade missions to the United States, UAE. Al, over to you, please. Well, thank you very much, Danny, uh, uh, and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and a good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining us on uh, the Dubai Advantage program. I am going to go through my, my slides very, very quickly, um, and uh, uh, I'm going to allow some time here for my colleagues from uh, 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 Emirates Airlines Sky Cargo to uh, say a few words after I'm, I'm, I'm finished. So just very quickly, uh, David, uh, please move to the next slide. And the next. So what we, we try and do is we call Dubai uh, the hub, the city, um, and um, a, a, a global uh, destination. And uh, as you can quickly see from the slides that are up, the, district, the uh, GDP contribution for various sectors that we have within uh, uh, in the Dubai ecosystem. In uh, 2019, the uh, uh, logistics represented 14% of the overall GDP. So you can see it's a very uh, important sector. 5.7% of compound annual growth rate on the industry for, uh, for 2020 is what's expected. Next slide, please. Uh, visitor growth. We're looking at uh, uh, a considerable amount of visitors coming in here, and as you can see, the, the graph does continue to climb. 2020 has been a bit of an exception, uh, and we probably won't quite see as, as many coming through, but the uh, airport is now open, and we're receiving visitors. Next. Next. Uh, you can go to the next slide. That, uh, that 2.4 billion has, has already been spoken about as far as uh, where Dubai is located. Uh, tons of freight through uh, Dubai uh, uh, DXB and DWTC, uh, DWC, uh, 3.4 million tons, 140 airlines, and uh, when everybody is running full flat out, about 8,000 uh, flights uh, per week. Next. Next. So one of the, the key things on, on this page is, is that Expo 2020, due to COVID, has been delayed somewhat uh, and will commence on October the 1st, uh, 2021 through to uh, March 31st, 2022. First time in the region and uh, with a the theme of connecting minds and creating the future. Next slide, please. And in the infrastructure sector, we have uh, invested very heavily in roads, uh, metro, a uh, variety of public transport, and uh, we've become a very, very attractive uh, um, a, a city location for investment in that sector. Next slide, please. I can also tell you that uh, many years ago, when I first started coming to Dubai, uh, trying to find a taxi here was almost impossible. There was no metro, and here we are today. Um, we're, we're moving along quite nicely. These are some of the stats as far as people using uh, uh, the public transit system. Next slide, please. So one of the big focuses within Dubai is to have educated, healthy, innovative, and uh, happy individuals. And we do have a minister of, of happiness here as well. Um, so the government is, uh, is, is making sure that uh, everyone that is here, uh, residents and uh, nationals, have a secure and cultural uh, and entertaining place to live. It's a very much of a pro-business environment. Uh, it's very uh, uh, proactive. It's transparent. It's reliable. We're using smart systems all, all over. 
uh, it's a great environment. If you haven't been here, please do come and visit, uh, visit Dubai and experience it yourself. Next slide. Next. Smart City is a, a very interesting area. Uh, you know, as, as part of the Smart City, the, uh, the world ranking for, uh, for best cities in 2019 showed Dubai as number six. Uh, and it's number one in the world's safest cities and uh, one of the most desirable um, um, in, in the MENA region. Uh, to help with this, of course, smart government. We've launched 100 uh, initiatives in 2014 and 100% uh, of all government transactions are today are paper free. Next. Blockchain strategy, very, uh, a, a, a big area for us. 100 million documents have been processed and it's the number one city in the world that is fully powered by blockchain. Next slide, please. Information technology, for those that are in, in engaged in that area, we have a very high penetration rate in mobile and ICT, and off, all, obviously uh, have a, a, an open data law here as well. Um, and privacy is very much a, a, very much in vogue here as it is in, in North America and in Europe. Um, so uh, if you're looking at uh, coming into the region, uh, Dubai is a great spot to be in uh, from a privacy issue. Next. Artificial intelligence, a growing area. This is uh, uh, a lot of companies that are here uh, in the logistics area. Uh, somebody had mentioned, one of the previous speakers had mentioned uh, agriculture. Uh, artificial intelligence is, is certainly uh, a big area and a growing, uh, growing sector. You see 37, point, 37 billion in the financial sector alone uh, for AI. Great area. Next slide, please. Science, technology, and innovation. Well, one of the things that we're very proud of is that we are one of the three countries right now that is uh, launching to uh, uh, Mars. Uh, our launch occurred uh, just earlier in the week, and we're very, very proud to see that uh, we have a probe going up that will uh, gather information and will be shared with the world on a uh, free basis. Very, uh, a very quick uh, a snapshot of, uh, of that sector. Next slide, please. Retail, well, 59 new global brands were attracted here in 2017. I understand there are uh, several other brands that are in the, uh, in the flows at the moment looking to come to Dubai. Uh, it's number one ranked uh, as the most important international shopping destination globally. Next slide, please. Manufacturing is a big area. It's one of our, our growth sectors. It's a, it's a pivotal sector for Dubai and the Dubai plan. Um, you can see 19.04 billion of bank credit to the UAE's industrial sector. Uh, we're targeting a global platform for knowledge-based and sustainable uh, industries. Uh, the central bank loaned, uh, uh, set out monies earlier this year during COVID to all the uh, registered banks to help with uh, uh, moving companies to the next to the next level, so that they can continue to survive and move forward. Next slide. When we talked about manufacturing, some of the areas that we are looking at that are very key to us: aerospace, maritime, pharmaceutical and medical, and aluminum and fabricated metals, fast-moving consumable goods machinery and equipment. So those are the key sectors that we're, we're focusing on. Next slide. Dubai's industrial strategy, the six sectors I just mentioned a moment ago, provide the growth engine, a home for global business and being environmentally stable. Next slide, please. So you can see GDP on manufacturing continues to rise at about a 9.2% average. Next slide. Next slide. 
Healthcare it dominates the the environment here quite nicely with a number of P3 projects on the on the on the go. Uh, medical devices, pharmaceutical manufacturing here, and a lot of R&D is is starting to come into the uh, Dubai ecosystem as well. Next slide, please. Medical tourism is a big area for us, projecting 500,000 patients this year. Next slide. Dubai medical tourism strategy, and again, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, very much of a, a growth strategy. Um, its vision is to position Dubai a uh, globally recognized destination for elective health and wellness treatments. And I can say that the docs here are, uh, are excellent. Next slide, please. And that's it uh, as, a, as a quick snapshot of, of Dubai. I will also just quickly mention um, from a geopolitical stability, uh, it has steady GDP growth uh, amid regional and global economic challenges. Uh, inflation re remains under control. The dollar, very importantly, is pegged is a pe uh, is pegged currency to the dirham. Um, it's a well diversified economy. Uh, we have a very happy 200 nationals that live here, uh, committed to happiness. Uh, we have bilateral ties with more than 100 nations, and we're ranked number 11 in global readiness. So when you add all that up with our logistics and some of the other sectors that I quickly mentioned, uh, Dubai, per, Dubai offers a wonderful place to work, play, and live. Danny, over to you. Thank you, Al. Uh, Jan Engelbrecht, Trader Commercial Manager Americas for Emirates Sky Cargo. Jens is based in Chicago, the largest freighter station for uh, Emirates on the west side of the globe. His role is to ensure the commercial health of the Emirates freighter platform into the Americas. With a fleet of 270 wide-bodied aircraft, including 13 dedicated freighters, Emirates Sky Cargo is the largest international cargo airline that connects over 155 destinations across over 85 countries and six continents. Jens, we're really short on time. Can you yep. do it in a minute for me, please, sir? Uh, I will try. So I would think that uh, there's a lot of facts and figures uh, in there. Thank you, uh, Danny, for the intro. A lot of facts and figures that everyone can check later at their leisure. Uh, I just want to stress a, you know, a few slides here, maybe eight at the tops, to try to keep it in that five minutes and, and breeze through it. So. Um, David, if we can go to slide uh, 92, okay, so next slide, next slide. Uh, right here, um, this just wanted to uh, highlight that uh, our number of aircraft, Danny mentioned uh, the number. Uh, we have 11 freighters plus two wet lease freighters that we use, but the important factor here to, to indicate is it's a very modern fleet and all wide body, very important for the network. Um, next slide to 95. Okay, uh, this was our pre-COVID uh, network now. So, um, of course, uh, many dynamics have changed as countries have closed or passenger flights have been uh, uh, reduced. Uh, we're on our way back now. Uh, however, this was the pre-COVID, so very important to know that all those destinations uh, with the wide body aircraft are, are uh, available. So we don't have, uh, this is a true network where not uh, we have you know smaller prop airplanes where you can't really get any of your cargo on there. So these are all uh, skid ready uh, destinations. Next slide. Um, on the hub, uh, incredible strengths uh, where we have round the clock departures. Uh, we don't have any night uh, flight ban uh, issues. So. Uh, we don't have to wait 24 hours for the next flight the next day. The next flight could be six hours later, which could be two in the morning. So uh, this really has an advantage as far as our uh, transit times um, in, into the destination. Um, so next slide. Uh, this is just a little bit of the hub uh that we have where we're connecting dubai with uh, dwc uh i know the other presenters mentioned the the incredible amount of uh, infrastructure uh that's been invested in both these airports uh, especially in now dwc and we're migrating there operating all our freighters out of dwc 
and connecting to our passenger planes in Dubai. So we're also matching that infrastructure as far as ground handling for all special products. Next slide. Uh, next slide. These are the figures you can check out later. Uh, next slide. Uh, just uh, real quick on our uh, pharmaceuticals is incredible about uh, massive amounts of pharmaceuticals that we're moving in and out of the United States, uh, connecting uh, much of India with generics and uh, a lot with uh, uh, temperature control out of the U.S. Uh, so we're all GDP certified uh, at both hubs in uh, uh, Dubai and DWC, as well as many stations uh, outside of Dubai, including Chicago. Next slide. Uh, this is a little bit on the connecting of the hubs where we talked about DWC in Dubai. Uh, we can connect uh, optimally and bookable within five hours. So flight arrival in DWC, offloaded, trucked, and uh, takes off again out of Dubai uh, in up to five hours, less than five hours in some cases. Next slide. Uh, that's some of the same thing, more looking at it uh, from a map. Next slide. Uh, next slide, we can look at that uh, at your leisure. Uh, next. Uh, we don't have to go into all the figures. Next. <laughs> uh, next. These are just some of the highlights of uh, the regions that we're going to. United States, here's our connections. We also move freighters. Uh, out of Chicago and Houston uh, and Los Angeles, uh, stopping in Europe where we can also move cargo from the U.S. into Europe uh, and then into Dubai. Next slide. Uh, some of the South America, next slide. Uh, also into Africa, just to give you an idea, next slide. Uh, into the Middle East, uh, just so you know, also important uh, for the Houston area, We've added quite a bit of lift now into uh, the likes of Dammam, uh, Riyadh, uh, Jeddah, and many points in, in the Middle East now. Uh, next slide. Uh, into Europe, next slide. Uh, into uh, Australia, Australia has been a, a pinch point right now uh, where we're uh, adding uh, capacity as the very high demand right now into Australia particularly. Next slide. Okay, um, as far as COVID, things have changed uh, dramatically over the last three days, uh, I'm sorry, three months, uh, where the first lockdowns, things were changing hourly. We're starting to get like a rhythm now, uh, although still dynamic. Uh, for example, we are moving now uh, passenger airplanes without passengers uh, and loading cargo on the seats. Uh, at times, uh, during the peak, and a lot of this is uh, with PPE inbound, much out of China, much out of Southeast Asia, uh, transiting via Dubai. Uh, so we did about uh, up to 40 flights a week into the United States with passenger aircraft uh, using the belly and the seats uh, for, for loading. So a lot of uncertainty. Uh, what's incredible is the flexibility and the government support uh, that we received and getting permits into specific countries uh, to fly because basically imagine uh, taking your whole flight schedule and slots and turning it all upside down. So the, uh, the, the, the support that we've had out of the UAE and Dubai to get those uh, uh, permits into those other countries uh, is, has been uh, nothing short of remarkable. Um, the demand is also incredibly changed with a lot of e-commerce uh, yes, uh, a mile of runway can uh, take you anywhere, but uh, moving that data is the other element uh, when it comes to that e-commerce, almost as important as moving the cargo itself. So uh, the, the openings and the, the, the availability infrastructure on the digital side has really provided us with uh, much potential, uh, particularly in e-commerce. Next slide. Uh, so this was uh, this is our passenger freighter network now. So imagine um, having 11 freighters and a, a, a whole bunch of passenger aircraft available to you. This is our network without passengers. So moving cargo uh, and uh, cargo on passenger planes. We actually have 10 aircraft that we've removed the entire economy class seats and doing floor loading. So we call those mini freighters. So 
the 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 flexibility uh, and the quickness and 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 the did not hesitate to take advantage of and supply uh, the world with the PPE that they need. Next slide. Uh, just an idea of our operations, six flights a week out of Chicago. Uh, those two, two of those are shared with Houston, uh, where we have two flights a week uh, and a flight out of Los Angeles. So uh, this is in addition to all those passenger freighters that we're operating and now slowly coming back with a passenger operation. Next. Uh, this is our schedule right now of uh, passenger flights. Uh, or passenger freighters. If you see uh, three digits, that's actually a repatriation flight. If you see a four-digit number, that's generally a, a pure freighter. Next slide. Uh, here, this is just the, uh, the difference of our pre-COVID network versus our current route network. And uh, incredibly, it doesn't look that much different. Uh, so uh, that's up to the expertise and the, the flexibility of uh, our scheduling, our headquarter, uh, our fleet, and uh, the governments involved and the support that we've had from the UAE. Next. And that's it. I appreciate your time. So I uh, try to keep it short, Al, Danny. So much, John. We really appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, we're going we're gonna to dispense with the Q&A session. I do want to announce that the CLE code for uh, today's session is uh, F57603. Uh, for those of you who need that code uh, to get credit, I want to thank Safar Shah uh, uh, for, for all of their help in, uh, in pulling this together and, and for, for taking the lead and being the host of this and the co-host. For those of you, there are one or two questions that we did get in the Q&A. We'll make sure we get you written answers to those. And Your, Your Excellency, Consul General Saeed Al-Mahari, Al excuse me, I'm going to let, let, let it over to you to let one last closing remark, if you might like, and then we're going to say goodbye. Please, sir. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate uh, the, uh, the information that gave uh, from all the entities, uh, from our partners, uh, Dubai FDI, uh, JAFSA, DAFSA, and the other entities. Really appreciated the information. Thank you, uh, U.S. UAE Business Council, Danny Sprite, uh, and uh, Safer Show, uh, Mr. Sai. And please, uh, this is the good opportunities to, uh, to establish a new business for the companies here in USA, but especially in, in uh, Texas area uh, to develop uh, their own business uh, in the free zone in Dubai. Uh, so, if you have any uh, kind of questions, uh, do you need any any kind of support? You can reach us at the consulate here in Houston, or the Safar Show, or uh, US UAE Business Council. We are very helpful to to support you and to uh, to to do the business uh, in in UAE. Thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate your help. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you so much. Thank you to all colleagues in the UAE and Dubai. It's getting a little late there right now. With that, we're going to end the webinar. And th again, thanks Safar Shah for organizing. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. Look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care now. Thank you. Thank you so much.